Hey, there we go. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jeff Fritz. <laughs> there we go. We got a little bit of sound. We're, we're awake now. We're awake. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be, or even if you're watching the recording out there, today is January 24th, 2019. We're going to write a little bit of code today. We're outside. We're at a tree house. This is not what Seattle looks like This right is now, not what though. Seattle looks like right now. And um, I, I've got a little a little update here on my face, but I want to introduce my, my guest today. This is Allison Buckholtz Al. Good oh. morning, Allison. Thanks good so morning. much for joining us. Why don't you tell folks who you are? Okay. So they uh, know. It's a little early, so <laughs> I gotta... It's like way earlier than I'm usually up. I'm sure anyone on the West Coast might also understand that. Come uh, on now. <laughs> so I'm Allison Buchholz Al. I'm okay. a program manager on the Visual Studio platform team. I've been here at Microsoft my whole technical career, actually. Which Got is years and years and years many and Many years. years. <laughs> many years. It was my birthday last week, and okay. my friends decided to tell everyone I was turning 34. Okay. But I'm not 34. Yeah. I'm actually 50. No, I'm just kidding. I'm 26 <laughs> now. So I've been at Microsoft for uh, three and a half-ish years. Okay. Um, always on the Visual Studio team. It's been a great team. Um, so Visual Studio team. That's mm -hmm. not just like four or five people no. or, or thousands of people, right? There's a little bit of this misconception that there's thousands of people working on Visual Studio <laughs> and .NET. It's actually, it's, it's... It's pretty condensed. I mean, if you take all of the customers that we talk with too, because we really also consider them as part of yeah, our team, yeah. um, especially as our culture has changed over the past few years. So many of the things we put in the product now are things people are asking for. Okay. So, you know, people out in the world, you might consider it thousands that way. But it is like, I'd say there's what? A couple, a couple dozen program managers who work okay. on Visual Studio, as we call it. Yeah. Um, and but those customers, they're contributing. They're giving feedback. They're yes. they're effectively stakeholders, pair programmers sometimes. Oh, for sure. I mean, you look at what the .NET team and the Roslyn team has done with open sourcing Roslyn, and the pull requests we see come in, all of the user interviews that I have to do to yeah. figure out what to build. And, and that's key. There's user interviews that you're doing mm -hmm. to actually get feedback from real folks. It, kind of like some of the folks in our chat room who are pointing out, yes, today is Rainbow Beard Day. There it is. I've I've colored in there. I've I can see it much better. I okay, it's, it's it's better. I guarantee it is yeah. rainbow. Got a little orange in the middle, blue and, and purple. Let me tell you, in in 720p, so no <laughs> wrinkles visible in this resolution. Fantastic, Stelzi. Thanks so much. Hello from Mesa, Arizona. Is Gumshoe. Uh, thank, thanks for joining us. Draco, hello. Yes, rainbow indeed. We're just looking at the chat room real quick. Jürgen in Germany says, nice rainbow beard. Thank you. So we hit the rainbow beard. This was, uh, so Allison, I was mm -hmm. trying to reach 5,000 followers. And so I, I see you made and it. We made it, and now, yes, I am paying up, as it were. Microsoft City Center in Bellevue is watching. Ooh. Thank you, Monster Llama. So you know how dark it is, Monster Llama. It's not that dark. Look at this. It's beautiful out here. Come join us. We have tree houses. I mean, we do. The tree house is pretty great. It have is. you been to it? I have not. I keep seeing it. I drive near it, and it's like, there's a thing over there I want to see. Mm. Well, so, you should definitely go see it. OK. Yeah. All right. So, so in addition to folks that are contributing out there, uh, maybe <laughs> Dee Dee will dye her beard? What? <laughs> It's still dark in Bellevue. No, it's not. It's not dark. This is the magic of television and the internet. Yeah. So, cool. in addition to having all the great feedback from folks like our pair programmers there mm -hmm. in the chat room, we've got a I mean, couple I can dozen tell pair you, programmers. Yeah. Yeah. We've got, uh, when I say I worked on Visual Studio, I've worked on a slew of things in Visual Studio. So, I started on the platform team working okay. on source control integration. So for those of you who use our branch switcher in the bottom yeah, yeah. right hand corner, that was my first project. Okay. So, you know, came in, hit the ground running with that. <laughs> uh, it's always fun to see people who are like, I'm so excited we had this. There's, so that even was my if first thing. For folks who aren't working on something like Visual Studio, but if they're working on a website or a mobile mm -hmm. app, when you do get that feedback from folks who are using your product, it's so it does. It lights it you warms up inside. Your heart. Yeah. Even if it's critical feedback, because that just means I now have something to go do to make this better. Oh, That's yeah. That's why I love being a program mm -hmm. manager. Is the treehouse green screen? No. 
No, no, that's really there. We're sitting outside. It's beautiful and sunny at 7 a.m. here. It's totally so, not raining and pitch black outside. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. I'm, I'm, I've got sound effects here ready to go. Okay. So you've been working on some of the cool new features that are coming in Visual Studio 2019. Yes. The next Visual mm -hmm. Studio. Can we take a peek? I know there was yeah. a preview too that came out. Can we look there at some is. of these things? Yeah, we can definitely take a quick peek around Visual Studio 2019. Okay. Um, so I am great at telling you, if any of, if any of you have downloaded preview too, when you've gone to that preview page, my face should look a little familiar. <laughs> because it's like right there. Oh, you had that great video from Connect as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Connect video. All right, so let's let's literally jump into Visual Studio here. Look at that. Ta-da. We're in Visual Studio. Cool. So, uh, I don't know how many of you have used Visual Studio 2017. Ah, see? There's someone there, Isaac, who knows I am the VS Tips person. Oh, yeah. So, so Isaac's uh, one of our colleagues who works out of New York. Awesome. Yeah. Well, good to see you here, Isaac. Um, and, and Fierce Kittens is recommending dark mode. I, I like dark mode. We can turn it to dark mode. Actually, right. let's do this. So uh, for those of you who have used Quick Launch in the past, it's actually one of my favorite ways to get to settings because we all know tools options. Yeah, but that chaotic. control Q is so easy to get to. It is. Like, it's just, oh, well, let's see if I change focus here. Now I'm there with control Q. Yeah. So actually one of the big changes in Visual Studio 2019 is that we've added a bunch of functionality to the search box here. So now you can search project templates. So if I do console, let's pray and hope this works. So right, we are looking at preview software. Let's make sure everybody knows. There you go. Yeah. So I can look at files. Um, there should actually be in preview too. Maybe this hasn't updated. You should be able to launch a project template directly okay. from uh, this search window now. Um, and you'll see that we have better sorting. So we have our NuGet packages. We've got our menu items. Mm. But if I want to do my theme, I can just type it. We'll see I have my general here. One thing that's actually really cool in my opinion though is if I misspell it, it usually Let's see if I can get the misspelling right. Oh, no, it's not working for me. Misspelling and fuzzy search should work. But as okay. uh, Jeff said, I am on preview. hot bits, yeah. preview bits. It's up there in the top corner. You can see the preview oh, label. Oh, yeah. yeah, right yeah. there. So fuzzy search should work. Um, I, you know, I always make the joke when I do my real demos. I've tested this. It works nine out of 10 times, but I did this demo nine times before to prepare. <laughs> and so of course, it's going to Well, you, um, you know what they say. What? 60% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> it does, 60%. Um, folks are asking, is there a rainbow mode in Visual Studio? There is no rainbow mode in Visual Studio. Come on now. We could go in and change our you know, fonts and colors, but that uh, it's I don't have that set up yet. But, um, can we up the font size maybe? Absolutely. Oh, so we've got like, our nice little switcher here. We can change that to, what about nice. 125? Sure, sure. Now it's in true hacker mode, says Fierce Kittens. Let me I, see. Okay, yeah. I might have a presentation mode on here. Ah, I don't have it installed on this preview, but for any of you out there who do like to do demos, there is a extension called Presenter. Presenter mode. Presenter mode, okay. and you can just toggle Presenter mode on and off, and it okay. changes all your fonts and things. So let's see if I search fonts, cool. So we can change the size of the fonts here. Um, what if we make our environment fonts a little bigger? Yeah. Now, um, you can, so there it does, Visual Studio, of course, comes with light, light theme, dark theme, blue theme. Mm -hmm. You can build your own themes to import, right? Uh, you can. So it's a little difficult right now. Well, like for your editor theme. For your, can... Right, for your text and, mm -hmm. and uh, text highlighting, but not for things like the highlight bars. Not that I know of. That might be extensible. Okay. We could do some research, um, but uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head, actually. Okay. Mads Christensen would be the one to know that. We might have to ask Mads when, yeah. we, when we see him. That might be fun to... To build some cool I, theme extensions. There's, there's folks in the chat room here who sound like uh, they might be interested in having that mischief. Mm -hmm. um, Mike says, I've been using the 2019 preview for a while, found some issues in debugging with containers. Where should I report those? Yeah, so actually up here in the top corner where yeah. it says send feedback, um, when you actually run into that debugging problem, if it's stalling or crashing or whatever, 
go ahead and hit report a problem, and that will actually grab um, some information about okay. what's happening in Visual Studio. And of course, you need to like submit that. We're not just going to take that info from you. Will it grab a screenshot? It can grab a screenshot. Okay. It can do a screen recording. There's all sorts oh, of things. Yeah. Um, and then that will actually jump you to developer community. Um, and then our product team, it's actually part of every PM's job to mm -hmm. go through those reports and make sure that we're responding to them. Oh, so we're, oh we yes. really do our best. There's obviously thousands of you, so our apologies if your problem gets skipped over. Um, but if it's definitely a prevalent problem, people can upvote it, and then we're more likely to be able to take action on it. Very cool. And uh, Mike says he hadn't seen it before. Perfect. Thanks so much, Mike. We Awesome. Make sure you click through there. Yeah, it's yeah, great so feedback like, for us. If we do report a problem here, we can actually just walk through it if it... Report there is no problem. It's working it's, amazing. I, I know, apparently. My edge is not totally working, and it does, is like web hosted, so mm. that might be an issue there. Um, well, this right. This is the thing. As a, as a program manager at Microsoft, you're always installing preview bits. Yes. So always. actually, I have my installation here. I've got three different versions of Visual Studio installed, yeah. and this is like the super secret branch right now don't, that I don't can't show you guys. Tell anyone. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I see. We have a question about the overall performance. So we are continuously. Uh, improving performance. So a lot of things we've done with the start window. So actually, if I go ahead and close this solution, mm -hmm. uh, you'll see this start window come up. Um, and so we've pulled a lot of the things out of startup so that you know this is pretty much flushed down. We don't have to start up mm. all the packages that we normally need for Visual Studio. So packages, that's not NuGet packages. That's no. different components. <laughs> Those are all the components. Okay. So uh, when we moved from 2015 to 2017, we created this workload idea, right? Mm. So if I go in and modify things, we've got these real componentized workloads. Uh, so if you're a web developer, you choose our ASP.NET and web development workload, and that's just the things you need mm -hmm. for that sort of development. Um, and right, so, right. because when I come in here, I, I want to say this is the type of development that I typically do. This is exactly. what my job is. Mm -hmm. Give me suggested installs instead of going through and saying, I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Give me everything. Yeah. So this actually came out of you know a year and a half of research into understanding how people were customizing Visual Studio, mm. especially for our new users out there. A laundry list of different components is. Yeah not the most welcoming thing. Oh, gosh, no. So, and then you have to wait forever for it to install. Oof. Yep. Um, so trying to, to figure that out and make it better. Visual Studio doesn't have Nyan Cat progress bars. Should I bug that? Off Bobby, I think that's going to be an uh, extension that, that yeah. you may want to build. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. It seems a lot faster than 2017, loving little UI changes. Awesome. That's great. Thanks for the feedback, Mike. Yeah. So uh, one of the things, you know, just to finish on my, that performance topic, yeah, yeah. solution oh my load gosh, that here was quick. Uh, happens real fast. Yeah. So uh, for those of you who tune in to my hopefully uh, build talk uh, later this year, we always do our side by side progress, and it's always really exciting and to see how fast it is. We haven't announced a build date yet. There's, but there, there's probably going to be a build event sometime in. In September, I don't know. We'll see. I announcement coming soon. I'm sure from our friends in the marketing on All the right. marketing team. I see Wait. a do it again. Sure. All you right. You ready? And missed it. Lee says. Okay. All right. Three, two, one, and bam. Boom. That's yeah. Magic. Yeah. I need Just that at like the timer. It was magic, like Jeff. Right two there. seconds. Magic, Jeff. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> I don't have magi a, a magic sound effect. I oh, don't. That's okay. I magic. I got it. Did it myself there. We're good. No, that's like Zelda. No. Um, and we can go back with. I have a rewind. No. Mm. No. And it, it didn't take this long. No. No, mm -hmm. that's too old school. It's much faster than that. So okay. Um, <laughs> surprise! 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 Um, so, President, not sure. I'm curious about solution open time with Xamarin Forms project. 
along with iOS and Android projects in the same solution. Uh, let me see if I have one of those. OK. Um, no guarantees, but I can take a quick look. Or if anyone has a solution they want me to clone really fast, we can do that and have a chat. Mm -hmm. um, actually, you know what? I bet James has something awesome on GitHub I could use. Maybe. Uh, oh, man, my browser is not working, though. It's misbehaving. It's misbehaving. Gumshoe ask, um, asks, am I using a Go XLR? No, actually, I'm using a TriCaster in a studio at Channel 9 Studios, Microsoft's Channel 9 Studios, and we have the amazing Golnaz in the other room helping out. I've got a stream deck here playing all kinds of sound effects. Well. You know what? We're going to try something interesting. So with Quick on Launch, you can actually search online. And since my edge does not seem to be working, Behaving. let's see how this okay. goes. OK. Because let's see. GitHub search. extension. Oh, I can only search online. It doesn't have the uh, actual like search uh, like on the web. Tell All right, well, we tried it, and it didn't work. OK. It, uh, Mordecai is saying, uh, tell Golnaz, Chad is asking about your back. How's it feeling? She's, uh, she's giving us the thumbs down from the other room. Um, yeah, she's helping us out and, and being a real trooper here today. Thanks so much. All right. You know what? We're going we're gonna to try I got this. a thumbs up for that one. Look at this. Oh, the chat room is feeling for you, Golnaz. Look at that. All right. Man, I can't find. Edge isn't even on here anywhere. It's just a ghost process now. It's just out there. It's just out there. All right. Mm. Well, looks like I am crippled by my edge, so by I can't browser. search anything. But, oh, no. okay. you know, thankfully, we still have tons to talk oh, about. Oh, tons of other yeah. things. So uh, I think a bunch of you noticed that the theme looks different. The UI here looks just there, looks fresher, ideally. The, there's no title bar, right? That was the first thing yeah. that struck me, is both Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio have no title bar. Yeah, so we've moved a lot of information down here. So you can see um, I've got my repository here. I've got my little notifications down here. Mm. Um, so we sort of moved that down. I do know there is a lot of feedback out there that people want their title bar back. So I know the product team is talking about that. Um, we've been engaging with a bunch of you, so. It, it, to me, it feels like a waste of space, right? It's got the name of the thing up there, and then it's just space mm -hmm. the whole way across. That's two more lines of code. It is. It is two more lines of code. And we, we really hope that, like, all of this information down here will be enough to help people out. But as with most things in Visual Studio, it's often configurable. Yeah. So maybe maybe that's the route Maybe it's take. an option we could turn on and off. Exactly. Exactly. So. Um, yeah. So, is that something we do? We want to poll the audience real quick whether they want the title bar. Actually, or not? yeah, that would be I a can, great one. Right. I know our product team lo would love information. Would like love that. that feedback. Here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to set up a poll real quick here. <laughs> we uh, have to listen to our developers. Yes. Um, where did it go? It's gone missing. Oh, I see. We have a question. Go what for it. slash how many programming languages do you know? So. That is a hard question because as we dive into IntelliCode, um, it's my job to know relatively like six languages or so off the top of my head. Um, but that does not mean I am pro developer status at those. I know them enough for simple demos. Uh, if we really want to get into it, I learned my very first programming language in college was C, so that was a trip. And then my Second intro class was OCaml. For those of you who know that, most of the documentation is from is in French and it's maintained by like I think six people mm -hmm. in Europe. Uh, very cool language. It was a lot of fun to learn. And then I did uh, Python for a bunch of my other classes. Uh, offhand, since I started at Microsoft, I know a little bit of C sharp. Uh, I know a little bit of TypeScript and JavaScript, although that one I am still learning. If you guys have any awesome recommendations for how to get better, send them my way. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I know a tiny bit of C++. Um, and then, is there any others? Yeah. So basically, whatever my job requires me to know, I got I to gotta ramp up fast and learn. So it's part of one of the great things of being at Microsoft, constantly oh, yeah. learning. Um, so check it out. If you mouse over the video here and you're on the, uh, you're watching in a browser, you're going to see a little thing that pops up for Twitch picks, and you're going to be able to vote Visual Studio 2019. 
title bar or no? And we have two options, remove the title bar and keep the title bar. Let us know what you think. We've literally got the team that this makes that decision here and they want to hear your opinion. And it's 50-50. It's oh my gosh! <laughs> Come on now! Let, uh, let me tell you something. All it right. can be done exactly how I want it. Exactly how we want it. <laughs> the only question is, are you the man to do it? Or the woman to do it. Yes, we are. Third option, a preference. Um, so remote. is that configuration? Yeah, be able to set a configuration. Is yeah. that the only two choices? Yes. Remove it, but make it configurable. Okay. All right, tell you what, I'll, I will restart the poll and add that option, if that's okay with, with everybody that's, here. That's cool um, with me. It, it won't let me re-add it. All right. All right, uh, official release of C-sharp 8. Unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that question. So, fun fact about the way our product teams work. Uh, we have our platform team, and that's you know sort of what builds what I like to call like the infrastructure of Visual Studio. So we have all the fun UI and the way things coordinate together. But then all of the features, like our language features, are actually separate teams, and they own that story. So. Maybe you'll have to get the other Mads or Dustin yes. to come chat, and they can tell you about all the cool C Sharp 8 features. Or Kendra. Kendra's yes. a pretty great, great um, C Sharp person, too. And she's, she's amazing. She kn really knows her stuff around she does. C Sharp. And, yeah. She does. Uh, I, I take tips from her <laughs> in, our, in our talks. All right. I am relaunching. There we go. So there's, I, I updated the poll, I reset it. Remove the title bar, keep the title bar, or make it configurable. What would you like in Visual Studio 2019? Let us know, just mouse over, and you'll see it pop up there, and we can see your, your votes here on my dashboard in front of me. Yeah, so I see a question about Fluent and title bars. So Fluent is the design system that a lot of uh, Windows is moving to. Okay. Um, don't quote me on this, although I am on camera, but I think Fluent has something about title bars that says, you okay. know, to really be clean and fresh, uh, we're trying to minimize as much information mm. uh, on a screen as possible. So one of the things we always say about the new Visual Studio is we're trying to reduce cognitive overload. And that's just a term that's it's really referring to how much information is on the screen at a given time. And where yeah. can we condense that information? How can we make sure uh, that we're not duplicating information like that. So that's why we have things that are a little more compressed or we've tried to reduce the clutter. Uh, things look a little, you know, flatter here. Mm -hmm. And hopefully more modern. I think it looks cool. Yeah. I really like the way it looks. So, um, all right. Mads Torgerson said in last week's Community Stand-Up, it probably won't ship with Visual Studio 2019. Mm. It's, um, I understand that it's coupled to .NET Core 3. three. Yeah. Which is in preview, right? It's in preview. It's in preview. You can get copies of, of .NET Core you can install and start working with. You can test it with your Windows Forms and WPF apps and start giving us feedback. Yeah. So, okay, I've been talking about the, the IntelliCode. Okay. What is IntelliCode and how can we use it? All right. So, uh, I guess I never finished my, my yeah, we've, sweeping. Right? My gosh. Yeah. The squirrel. <laughs> Right? We get distracted so easily. Yeah. Uh, so to, to circle back, I yes. used to work on the platform. I worked on source control integration. I spent a year on new user onboarding. So for all of you new users out there, we spent a ton of time researching you. It was great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I just recently, I think about six months ago, moved over to the Visual Studio and Telecode team. So okay. my one-liner is we are looking at cutting edge machine learning and artificial intelligence to okay. improve developer productivity. Okay. So that's our tagline. But what does that mean? I'm sure that is like buzzword, buzzword, buzzword. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Come on now. But th this is really what we're doing. We're it really is. using these it things. It is. Um, so what our first offering is, is better IntelliSense. So, okay, so what does in, that mean? It, IntelliSense, right, is that thing when I hit control space yeah, so and it, it gives me the completion things, right? If we did, yeah. So like we've got a thing here. If I activate IntelliSense, uh, this, is, this is our IntelliSense suggestion right. window, right? And, and 
Some people, I've heard some people say, it rots the brain to use that. No, you know what? Oh, God, it's so wonderful. It's, it makes my job easier, and it, it helps me learn the API, actually. It does. Right? Because I'll sc scroll through there and be like, oh, look at that. I didn't look know at, you could do... Look at all the things you can do with a string. Right. Like, I forget how many things you can do with string manipulation. Right. And Mr. Thomas Rayner, we are not going to say blockchain. There is no Ooh, buzzword but you just said it. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, one of the things that we've heard so much from people who do use IntelliSense all the time is, I want it smarter. Like, alphabetical's great, but it's, it's 2019. We've got to do better. The, right, there was that thing where it would put a section of things at the top yeah. of IntelliSense. So, that's IntelliCode. Uh, well, no, I thought it was like, there was like a line that was drawn. It was like, here are the methods at the top of the IntelliSense or something like that. Mm. Right, with the filters down there at the yes, bottom. Yes, yes, we can do filters. We can do filters. So that was our first attempt to make it smarter. We okay. said, hey, if you know I'm looking for a property or a method, you can quickly filter to those. So that's our, that was our first attempt over in Visual Studio 2017, I right. believe. Okay. Um, but then with IntelliCode, which is currently an extension, mm -hmm. so it's not in box yet. It's experimental. Okay, but it, it, it puts these stars on things? Yeah. Okay. So it just randomly chooses, the, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Random? <laughs> no. Uh, so what we do is we have a machine learning model uh, yeah. running in the background of Visual Studio now, and it tries to choose the most contextually relevant uh, methods or properties in Co your intelligence. Contextually data. relevant to the code you're writing? To the code I'm writing right now. So. Wow. That's pretty <laughs> impressive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, you use concat a lot. Want to try interpolation? So we're not quite there yet, but that is a direction. That's a neat idea. That is a neat, yeah. Actually, I would love to, if you guys have any ideas for how we can use AI and machine learning to help you, send them my way because we're exploring all the options right now. The sky is the limit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is that contextually relevant? This is a good question from mm -hmm. R.H. Sumner. Relevant to the file project solution or the user? So it's really about the, like, I guess file is the best way to say it, but it's really about like where you are in your code base. I think an example will actually make this okay. a lot easier. Yeah, we've been talking about it. Let's yeah. actually see it. Yeah. So actually, you know what? Let me see if I can do my, do I have zoom it? And Hugo, we are your Clippy, sitting inside Visual Studio, making things happen, telling you what's so wonderful right here, right, right. inside hopefully, of. <laughs> hopefully people can see that. We can always try and up the environment a little bit more if okay. necessary. Um, so what we have here is I have a var that is a shuttle time. And basically, I'm trying to take this first shuttle, which is a string here, and split it into an array. So if I have var here, and this is a string, and I activate IntelliSense, IntelliSense, or IntelliCode rather, says, hey, we have scanned all of these open source GitHub repos. And based on how people manipulate strings usually, they generally use a replace. Okay. Like if you're if you're just if you just have a random string out in your code, you're not you're not in an if statement mm -hmm. or a for loop or anything, you probably just want to replace something. So okay. that ends up being the top thing here. Um, okay. so, but for example, if I give IntelliCode and Visual Studio a little bit more information and I change this to a string array, mm. something interesting is going to happen. At least I hope it will. And when I activate it, it actually says split at the top of my list now because okay. it takes into consideration what my uh, ending type is going to be mm. and uses that to better recommend a uh, method for me. Okay. so so. It, on the fly, even though it's still working with, uh, gosh, I mean, that feels like it's a little bit of IntelliSense, mm -hmm. right? But with that adding of, yeah, I need to end up with this type, you literally, I don't have to type SPL, it's recommending. It's right there. So it literally dot, tab, <laughs> and it just goes. Um, is yeah. that uh, Philip Sandstorm? Thanks so much for the raid. We've got four people joining us from over there. Yeah. Um, and then I see is there documentation on what repos have been scanned. So um, we have a ton of documentation. We will go very far into privacy and security because that is what I've spent most of my days talking about with users. And I want yeah. you all to feel safe and comfortable with trying this extension and knowing that 
big bad Microsoft is not trying to steal your code because that's not what we're trying we're to do. I the promise. We're hip and cool Microsoft. And if you want more information about IntelliCode, the bot will drop a message every now and again about where to go to learn more about it. And I think there's a link in the channel below that'll mm -hmm. take you to more information about IntelliCode. Yeah, but the short answer on what repos have been scanned, we have we have two different modes for IntelliCode that we'll get into. The first one is the base model, which is just what I'm using now. And this has been created by scanning over 2,000 open source GitHub repos. So these are repos that are already out for public use, um, and they have at least 100 stars. That's just a heuristic we use to sort sure. of, you know, something filter that's popular. Out. Yeah, something that's popular. Okay. Okay. Um, and IntelliCode is really about taking those 2,000 open source repos and sort of finding the most popular practices. They're not the best per se right now, but that creating that best it, heuristic is what we're working it's on. It's a starting point. Exactly. Right? It's somewhere for us to say, here's something that we think is pretty cool, cool to work useful. with. Yeah. And okay. we've only been. This was released at Build last year, so it's it's only been you know it's been less than a year at this point okay. that we've been we've been working. Still on growing, this. Uh, adding features to very cool. <laughs> They're um, everyone. And, and it looks like looking at the poll, the, the poll is still live. If you want to vote, do you want to do you want the title bar on Visual Studio 2019 or not? So far, make it configurable is leading with almost 70 percent cool. of the votes. I can't say I'm surprised. Okay. I know our developers like things to be uh, the way they want it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. why Very we have so many extension Creatures points. of habits. Yeah. Right? Um, cool. So, so, go for it. I was going to say, uh, folks are asking, can you train your projects so that it knows how to work with my code? Yeah. So, um, it's actually a pretty cool thing. Uh, in December at Connect, we actually released what we're calling custom models. And that is the ability to be able to train on your own C Sharp code here. Okay. So, if you have custom types, custom methods, custom classes, IntelliSense and IntelliCode doesn't know about those, right? Those sure. are now in our open source GitHub repos. You yeah, might be working yeah. on super secret software that isn't out there yet. Or, or maybe I'm working on a NuGet package for something that's not released and it would be fantastic mm -hmm. to be able to have a great model to go with that. Exactly. Okay. I think we might get into that in a little bit. I've got ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, so, for this is custom models are only for Visual Studio right now. And okay. They're only for C Sharp because, as I mentioned, we are a small, I keep calling it like an incubation team. We're trying to figure out, you know, is this something people really want? Should it be in the product? And being an extension allows us to experiment and fail fast and hopefully yeah, succeed yeah. fast. Um, so, we've started Wait, with C Sharp. Minimum viable. Yes, that's Get it where working, we are. Figure out if this makes sense for folks, and then look at deploying into other other languages. Wait, hang on. What other languages are supported <laughs> by IntelliCode? So, uh, in Visual Studio, we support C Sharp. Okay. We support um, C plus plus, but only if it's uh, Visual Studio 2019. So, okay. unfortunately for my C plus plus users, you have to be on the preview build of Visual Studio, but it's just the normal IntelliCode extension, and that will just work. Normally, and okay. the C plus plus team is working real hard to make sure that is as exciting as possible when we uh, when we launch. W. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. And we also support um, XAML, so that one's okay. actually really fun. Uh, we always make the joke that it's tab tab enter because it's such a you know th the language is so what's the word I want structured. Okay. Um, that it's really easy for us to predict. If you're building a button, <laughs> this is probably the structure you're, you're going to want. Click. You're going to want this. Exactly. So it's pretty great there. I knew this question was going to come. F sharp? Not no F sharp yet. We've had a total of one request from my survey so far. Two uh, now. Two now. I will so, update my counter. Yeah. Um, if you want F sharp support or Q sharp support, we do have a repository. Uh, if you go to our FAQs page, there's a link on how to add a suggestion. There you go. The stream elements bot just dropped it go. in there into the chat room. You can click that link, aka.ms slash VS IntelliCode. Learn more about it and give yep. feedback. There, give, yeah, give feedback. We we have an open uh, GitHub repo on our docs page that will allow you to uh, make any suggestions for languages you want, and okay. then you can get all your friends to vote for the language you want. So Absolutely. I know for any PowerShell folks out there, 
I am listening because there's like 200 of you now. So mm. we are. We're hoping we can do that. Uh, so that's for Visual Studio. Okay. Um, IntelliCode actually has a Visual Studio Code extension as well. Now we're talking. I now know, we're talking. I know. All right. So can't forget about the, the yeah. baby sister or baby brother that is Visual the, Studio. The code. younger one, the, yeah. the one that hasn't been around for 15, 16 I years. I thought it was 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm pretty okay, sure I have years. a bottle of 20 years. Um, <laughs> 20 years. My 20 bad. 20 years. Yeah. Um, 21 to the day. Yeah. So, uh, we also support Visual Studio Code, and we've got three extra languages there. Okay. So, we've got Python. I know there was a request for Python Yep, there. Hugo asking about Python. Mm -hmm. So, we do have Python. Okay. We've got TypeScript and JavaScript, which is Of exciting. course, yes. And we also have Java. Really? Yes, Okay, so, so, it does support C Sharp in, in, in uh, Visual Studio not, Code? It does not support C Sharp in Visual okay. Studio Code. You're going to have to talk with Dustin about that, because, you know, he's the... He's the be all end all for, for We're gonna the have to do C sharp like yeah. extension there. Um, we do know people would really like C sharp in VS. Yes. Do it. We want <laughs> we want C sharp. I got the hat for it too. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. That's there's a request for us to file and, and stuff yep. the voting bag on. But the 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 fact that the features are there in both editors is huge, right? Mm -hmm. That really shows. The open source editor is getting this type of advanced set of features, right? Mm -hmm. That are really going to make us more productive. And I love that about the, the work that we're doing and that your team is doing that make it so easy for us to, to collaborate with others and and extend and, and make our editor experience better. Yeah. Better? Better? Yes. Better? -er? Yeah. More Get better? to work, Dustin, says Code Rush. That's our friend Mark Miller. Hey, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I will say there is sort of like a hack if you really want uh, IntelliCode in VS Code for C Sharp. Do you yeah. know what it is? What it's is a it? little roundabout. Really? Yeah. Go ahead. I don't even know if it's a hack, but you could Hang do on. This. Is it? Wait, master. Is it? Is it? It might be dangerous. <laughs> is it dangerous? It's not dangerous. I just think it's a little more trouble than it's worth. So oh, do tell. <laughs> I'm Ooh. sure your uh, your followers here yeah, are yeah. very familiar with Live Share. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. We've done Live Share a lot here yeah. on So on if you start Visual Studio okay. and then you start a Live Share session with yourself and you launch VS Code for that. There's a Billy Idol song that I'm thinking <laughs> I should be playing, but I don't have it, and I don't want to be DMCA'd, but uh, yes. Uh, IntelliCode will port those suggestions over. So IntelliCode, if, if the host machine or host instance of LiveShare has the IntelliCode extension installed, those suggestions actually show up we'll go for over. the collaborator. Inconceivable! That's pretty cool. Okay, yep. okay. So, I'm, I'm not saying I recommend that, but if you really, really if want... If you really want to do it, you can make it happen. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so, okay. So, okay. So, you have a custom model here. That, yes. And you can only do custom models in Visual Studio. Correct. Is it, is it in 2017 and 2019? Yes. Okay. So, it's the IntelliCode extension. And okay. since the IntelliCode extension is installable on 2017... Ooh, we're losing connection there. No, you're good. There. You're okay. Good. That's just um, our display. Okay. Uh, we because we install on 2017 and 2019, you get custom models in either one. So, nice. Okay. Yeah. If you want to try training a custom model and yeah. you have the IntelliCode extension installed, you can do the quick launch, which is what I recommend, and just type in IntelliCode to bring up this window. I, I love the type ahead. Find my my whether it's my apps in Windows and Control Q in Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. I don't want to touch that mouse. Keep my hands on the keyboard. Yep. It's it's pretty great. I do oh, love yeah. it. Um, because otherwise, you have to go to View Other Windows and IntelliCode right here. Okay. So it's a little hidden again because we're trying to figure out where it's going to live. And that Other Windows menu is getting so big. We're going to need an Other Other Windows yeah. menu next to it to just keep going across. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, code Air IntelliCode is not related to IntelliJ. It this is, is not. a Visual Studio feature. Mm -hmm. We so. would like it to mean intelligently coding. Yeah, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. um, IntelliCode is an extension, so it's installable on all uh, SKUs. So community people, go for it. So Silicon Orchid, there you go. You're going to be able to give it a try if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. So 
So we can train this on our own code, and you have a share model button there yeah. and retrain. Before I ask about share model, because mm -hmm. that's exciting, <laughs> retrain, that just let, scans my code again and, and builds this AI model? Yeah. So what actually happens is retrain will rerun the process. So okay. I think everyone's, oh well, I hope you're interested in learning how it works. We get to yes. get, do a little behind the scenes here, and of you don't course. have to read through you know, pages of documentation. So what happens in our training is that we extract data from okay. your source code. It's a huge misconception that you're uploading your source code. We don't need your source code. We just need specific elements and measures about it. Okay. So, uh, for anyone who's done machine learning, you know, hacking on their own, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. there's there's certain data features that we need. Okay. So this might be something like, oh, are you in an if loop? Okay. So is this a <clears throat> similar type of static analysis I might have seen in a tool like Independ? I don't know, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's it's it is a little bit of static analysis. So for okay. C sharp, part of it is we need to be able to build your solution. We actually do leverage Roslyn. We have something called an extractor, and that basically naming things. We're getting good I at know, that. I know. I <laughs> know. It's it makes sense for once because we're extracting data from your code. Uh, so it's actually I think quite well named. Cool. Uh, okay. But basically, all of this happens client side. So okay, inside it, Visual Studio. It happens inside Visual okay. Studio. Okay. So what happens is we we extract all of this information. That's in a file. It's not actually that big. It's like okay. a, an encrypted JSON file, which is pretty cool. Um, we've got some things that are obfuscated that only we know about. It's our secret sauce. Mm. Um, and that file is uploaded to our IntelliCode um, service, basically. Okay. So we've got our own little, you know, Azure cluster that does all this fancy mumbo jumbo uh, machine yeah, the learning analysis and all of that. Yeah. Don't let IntelliCode gather so much data it starts coding for itself. Th this isn't the T one thousand here. Oh coder. no! Don't worry. It's not that smart. No. Yeah. We, we will have jobs for for a while. So them. it's not actually taking my code. It's taking no. information about it. Yeah. Sending it up to the cloud, doing the analysis, and then it sends it back. And then it sends it back. Okay. So actually, one thing that I think that's pretty interesting to look at. Let's see if we can. In oh man, can I? Oh, let's change these fonts. That is too tiny even for me here. And um, is that Ollie Pike? Hold that thought about plans for the model to be versioned in source control. Hold that thought. When we get to sharing, we'll we'll make sure that. All right, we that ask looks Allison a little better. There we go. All right. Um, so what happens here is actually, it's you know what? Right over there. Let's let's retrain. You know, I'm going to make that a little bigger because okay. that is that's still a little tiny in my in my opinion. Oh, the font size is the right size to me. Look at really? that. Really? Yeah, okay. well, um, it's right here. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a little better. I think that's cool. Oh yeah, we can yeah, see that. We can see that. So uh, this is actually our service, you know, URI here. Mm -hmm. um, so this is where our all this information is sort of stored. Okay. Um, so as we, I just did a retrain, right? That was quick. It is very fast. Okay. It's pretty cool. So basically, each training is solution based. So you have to train once per solution. All right. Um, Unfortunately, there's not a way to like, don't scan this project or don't scan that file. Mm. It's all or nothing, but okay. we are looking for feedback because maybe it should be configurable. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Well, yeah. We'll look I know at there's some so of many code. thoughts. Oh my there's gosh. so many thoughts. So many of the thoughts. <laughs> so we extracted it with our C sharp uh, provider here, which okay. makes sense. We're in a you know a C sharp. Uh, solution here. Mm -hmm. The extraction completed in 5,600 milliseconds, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. We uploaded it. Uh, so if you really need to crack open and be like, hey, I have, I really want to look at this data, you can actually go to this zip file here and crack it open. Okay. Uh, don't use it to engineer your own IntelliCode because then we will have to come after you. But you can totally look at it if you'd like. Okay. Um, so then we are attempting to download our blob. And actually, this said we retrained super fast because there wasn't even a chance 
for us to have to retry to download. So what's happening is that data file is fed into the machine learning black box that one mm. of my data scientists could explain far better than I could. Yeah, I'm just um, a C-sharp developer. You know, <laughs> I just work on the experiences. So I can give you a guess of what happens in that black box, okay. but I don't want to confuse people. So it's let's just consider it the machine learning magic. Data scientist folks make sure that that's optimized. Mm -hmm. Exactly, um, and they will they're constantly tweaking it to figure mm. out how to make it smarter. Magic, yes, that's Ex right. Exactly, magic. It's my magic fingers. I don't have a. Ma I need a you magic need a, sound effect. There is there's definitely like a great gif too. It's just like magic. I know. Yeah. Anyways, magic happens. Yes. Uh, the model is then like it sends a I'm ready message and Visual Studio and Telecode the extension says, all right, give me that model and it downloads it and it activates it for you. Okay. So that's what you are seeing here. So we received three changes to the model, no failures. For those of you who are trying out custom model training, the output window is your friend uh, if you want to know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. So it, it now, do I do I have to click retrain every time that I, I make a significant enhancement? Yes. Okay. So uh, a lot of the questions I've been getting as I've you know engaged with customers as we release this is how do I know when to retrain? And that's a super yeah. valid question. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have said, "You're AI. Can't you just <laughs> figure out when to train it for me?" And you know I agree with you. So I'm hoping we can do that, but okay. that's not there yet. Sure. Um, minimum viable, right? Minimum we're, viable. We're preview. This is still growing and exactly. evolving. Exactly. Okay. But if you want to help me help you, send me lots of feedback that says you want me just to do it for you. Yeah. So. Or, uh, gosh, I could even see wanting to put that into my, my Azure DevOps process. Oh, yeah. We've heard that a okay. lot. We've heard that a lot. So, um, so basically, you have to click retrain whenever you know, maybe you add a new project or you significantly change the way you call oh, a class. Yeah, maybe a maybe you renamed a class. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you That's definitely need to everything. retrain. Yeah. That. Yep. Train on post build successful recommends nameless. Yep. Uh, maybe. Uh, Got to balance the how frequently you run that process, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So, hmm. So. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So yeah. so it's retrained now, and so that works for you locally. What mm -hmm. does share model do? Right. So share model is our way of letting you take your training and your model and give it to someone that maybe works on the same solution or the same repository. Okay. Or one of the scenarios I think is really cool is I know you know you're creating this package. Yes, you've got a lot of custom types and yeah, oh yeah, yeah, so and you're probably using them in the way you'd like package referencers to use them, right? Yes, it's probably a good example of how you right. use it. There's, there's this thinking of, do I need to give people then some Rosalind analyzers to say here's the way you should be using it? Mm -hmm. But what you're showing me is I could have IntelliCode possibly say here's the way that. Here's the way we tend to use it. Like okay. you might want this property or this method at this point because you've done okay. X Y Z things before this. Okay. Yeah. I'm, all right. I'm feeling yeah. it. So, so for those folks who have been watching the stream and have seen our what we've been working on for the past two weeks, we've been building this this uh, library so that we can build plugins for the Elgato Stream Deck, the little button device that I have here that plays all my sound effects and does scene changing. Um, so we've been building a NuGet package using .NET Standard that folks will be able to use to build their own plugins. So we could train against that mm -hmm. and share the model. So I mean, that we folks can try can that. I think I've got it downloaded. Let me see. I think I have Make it. it go. <laughs> Just saying. Oh yeah, I've got the solution right here. It's like we planned for this or something. Cool. So now you actually. And I know things. I do. We planned. <laughs> Over mimosas. Yes. <laughs> we forgot them this morning. We did. Um, it's an early morning here. It is. It's and it was so sunny at the at the treehouse. <laughs> um, yes, the Stream Deck Toolkit project. Yes, I. It might not be in the Git links below, um, but you can go to my GitHub, uh, GitHub.com/slash/c-sharp-fritz, and you'll find a link off to the Toolkit project. 
Also, if I know we have uh, an ask for these stickers. Oh, yes. Uh, we do, I love these stickers. We have, I basically, this is one sticker, I heart, and then you can get like the Visual Studio sticker or the Visual Studio code. If you ever C see- C-sharp, you can get oh, C-sharp in there. Can. You can get all the languages, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who want them, if you run into any Visual Studio booth at any conference, I will actually be at VS Live in Las Vegas in March. Okay. I should have a nice, healthy stack of those. So come find me, uh, and I will give them to you. Cool. Yeah. Visual Studio hats need to be a thing. I've I've been oh, asked for. I love it. This is a custom hat that I, our friend Fierce Kittens. She's in the chat room. She designed the C Sharp logo based on for this hat based on. The, the logo that we already have. We do have stickers for that. I carry those stickers with me. If you run into me at an event, I'll make sure you get some of those. Mm -hmm. But we made that, and I'm, I wanted to make a Visual Studio hat. I, I've, got, I, I've got ideas for an Azure hat. I love that Azure A you see in the corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. a cool little logo. It is. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you already opened our project, and we can train this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, First, do you have a good like uh, class that you tend to use a lot? I just want to let them know that we're not getting IntelliCode suggestions for it. Sure. Yet. So when you're bi so there's there's two projects in the solution. There's the okay. library that's Stream Deck Lib there on mm -hmm. the bottom, and the main class that you use out of that to start programming against is the um, the Connection Manager. Okay. And cool. You use the Connection Manager with a Base, I believe it's a base uh, plugin, base Stream right. Deck plugin. So folks should implement a base Stream Deck plugin, mm -hmm. and then connect to the connection. Uh, uh, use the connection manager with that to. All right. Start. So I think what we actually really need is a place where you've like used this. Do you have like a sample? Fantastic. If you scroll up in the solution okay. manager, the canonical example that we've built on as. Here's the way to use it is the sample plug in there. And that okay. builds just a little counter that, that mm -hmm. shows up. So would you say my sample plugin is? There's my sample plugin. Okay. And uh, there you go. So here, um, one of our friends, Carrie Payette, wrote this little method that says when the counter is mod 10, it's a multiple of 10, we're going to show um, an alert button, alert icon out here. Um, when it's a multiple of 15, we're going to open Bing. And when it's a multiple of three, we're going to show the OK button out there. OK. Well, let's see. I actually didn't take a ton of time to look at this because I was up so early. So it looks like we have this connection manager class, right? Mm -hmm. And we've got, OK, that looks cool. Excuse me, everyone, while I take a gander at this to figure out a good place to, to show you that. You things. can do it! We can! <laughs> awesome. So. <laughs> Let's go up here. I'm just going to keep dropping sound effects I on know, Allison here. I it's know. Gonna... <laughs> so let's see. This manager. Man, it's not. Maybe I need to build this. You know what? I might sure. need to build this first because I'm not getting suggestions where I expect them. Uh, you know, I've got a dot here. I would expect IntelliSense to, to give me something, but it's right. not. You know what? It looks like it's. Oh, wait. You've got to build fail. Oh, see, that would do it. .NET Core 2. Two. We might be able to just. Mm. Mm. Okay, so the sample plugin project right now is .NET Core 2.2. I okay. think we can pull it back to 2.1. All right. Let's see. On the fly, look at this debugging and fly. writing code. All right. So we probably want to open this file. Um, or you can you can let's go. Um, yeah, right click on the project, right? Yeah, that's right. I know. I'm like trying to remember. It's bringing back all my anxiety from. Actually, right there on line five, it's already highlighted for you because we now oh. open the project file for you in the text editor. And we can just change right. it to one. Let's, Let's see if it's it a shot. Oh, we, I think I saw issues, but you know what? We're going to. No, no oh, issues. Oh, it's installing. Here. It's restoring. There we go. There we go. Build is starting. Success! Okay, that's actually really good because. Comes yeah, gotta <laughs> um, have a build. In order to build a custom model, you do need a successful local build. Sure, so that makes sense. That would not have worked if we did not do that. Opens project file in the editor. It, that's kind of like what you should expect, right? Yeah. Wanted that for years. Yeah. So I think uh, that came in in like update six. 
in in twenty Visual Studio twenty seventeen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Being so, able to edit the CS Proj. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Um, it just reducing those little cuts everywhere. Yeah. Um, okay. See, and now that we have a successful build, there's actually this little oh. status bar thing Ooh. that says, "Hey, you've got a C sharp project. You've got code. You've got IntelliCode installed. Do you want better recommendations?" And that will take you to the training page too. Yeah, Mr. Magoo, I do not have just a brown beard. I'm. We're just zoomed out a little bit. Cool. Here. All right. <gasps> so we've got manager here. Do these methods and properties look familiar to you, yes. Mr. Jeff? Absolutely. All right. right? So, so this is not smoke and mirrors. No, 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 not at all. Right. So some of these those properties like set title sets the text that appears on the buttons on on the stream deck, and you can see the well, you can see the labels, yeah. Allison, here that we've got. Cool. Um, yeah. So this manager, right? This is a connection manager based yep. Stream Deck plugin dot manager. Right. So cool. Okay. All righty then. So let's train and see what happens. We're gonna do it live. I have that. I have that one. Hang on. Hang on. Do it live. There we go. Cool. All right. So um, if you are interested, you can learn more about the process here. Uh, we're probably going to add some cool animations or whatnot to this page because I know people are confused, as I mentioned, about what is getting uploaded. Mm, um, okay. And I don't want people to be confused. I want them to be excited and happy and to feel safe. Yeah. Safe right? and cozy, like a warm blanket when they use IntelliCode. So, um, what? I'm just looking here, yeah. looking at the comments. Illyrius, uh, what about Project JSON? I'm missing that comment. Hmm. Um, New dot, oh, the solution file format. Is there a new file format coming? I don't know. I don't know. We would have to talk to the project teams. And actually, tomorrow, Scott Hunter might be joining us. Oh, I'll I be bet you can ask him. finalizing that later, and that's the person to ask. Um, well, that finished training, that was quick. I was going to ask yeah. Mike's question, can we have Visual Studio play the you can do it when it's ready? There's actually, I bet there's an extension for that. I, actually, there's a setting in Windows. You can go into Windows Sound Settings and you can choose Visual Studio and there's Build Complete settings oh my God. you can choose. That's yes. incredible. Today I learned. Yes. That's so, going to annoy my team so much. More like Purple Beard. Well, purple on the one side, blue on the other, and yeah. a little orange in the middle. Visual Studio Colors. I got to tell you, the MVPs are asking me to do the Rainbow Beard for Summit. I did not realize it was the Visual Studio Colors. It's the ready, the debugging, the And code, Visual Studio Code with yeah. the blue. Yeah, maybe. That's pretty cool. Maybe. Casey Renee Cosplay. Hey, Casey, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you like the beard. <laughs> yeah, and folks have said I should, I should have my eyebrows done rainbow and no. Gomer Pyle, golly, when a build succeeds. Okay, you can get crazy and have fun with Visual <laughs> Studio, but we've got it trained. Yeah, we've got it trained. There's now. no reason to have a sound effect to go off when it finishes training because literally you're pushing the button and it's coming back. Yeah, um, someone I talked to when we were uh, doing research for this before Connect, before we announced it, um, they had a project, or sorry, a solution with 180 projects. I think, it was, I think it was something like two gigs. And do you want to guess how long it... <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. When you're scrolling, that's the sound you're hearing from Visual Studio. The, the scroll bar goes down and you're just hearing... <laughs> and Gary Busey is, is going crazy for us. Yeah. So 180 projects and a solution. Do you want to guess how long it took? Minutes. But like how many minutes? 30. Mm -hmm. So... I'm sure you guys remember my explanation of, you know, how these things work, the three steps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That took maybe, what, three minutes when I'm talking consistently? Yeah. It was done by the time I finished talking. Oh, my. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Right? I mean, okay, and how about the load time opening all those projects? So that I can't speak to. Okay. Uh, That's another I did team. Not. That's another team. You can talk to, yeah, actually, you should talk to another team about that. Um, okay. We, I mean, we, we always use Rosalind as our demo project, right? I think. Because yeah, that's in, a huge project. It's a huge project. I okay. think we're down to like 17 seconds to load that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty incredible. Kendra actually does do a lot of that, so you can, you can ask her. Woo! Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so it's trained. Now, how does this improve my code, 
but the experience that I have, if I if I was building a plugin, if I was in my sample plugin mm -hmm. and interacting now with my connection manager. So one cool thing here is that we give you the top three classes mm, that okay. you should go look for recommendations on, and this is just to tell you like, hey. This is, these are the classes we found the most info on, so we can probably give you good suggestions. Mm. This is just to help you sort of verify that IntelliCode is working the way you expect. Um, but we also do give you this number, and it says we've learned 35 classes. I haven't written that much code. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 so okay, it okay. looks like Stream Deck event payload. So like Stream Deck lib dot messages would be a good one. You know, we're gonna go check a couple of these. I think we saw some connection managers earlier. Yeah. So the payload that's a class that actually we serialize that does the communication back and forth between the the application that runs the hardware and um, our connection manager. So okay. as we're building the library, that's important. But as for somebody who's building a plugin, mm -hmm. not so much. So I think Manager here has some starred recommendations now. So in okay. fact, okay. at this point right here, we have you said you wanted Manager dot set title async. Yeah, yeah. And now and it's that the top. is the very the top. top recommendation. Okay, that is that's really cool because these are. These and I, are, do these three look like your most popular? For for right now, at this point in in the development, it is because set title sets the text that mm -hmm. appears on the buttons. Okay. Set settings is like um, it's like setting a cookie, right? Okay. Re hardware, remember this information because maybe I'm going to a different screen, and when I come back, I want to reload it. So those are my my two that we're using primarily now, but there's other features that, that we still need to add, mm -hmm. and I'll be able to retrain and get those, but for somebody for right building now, a plugin, when they're building it, those are the two that I would want somebody to be able to use. So that's pretty cool that it already knows and is able to work with that. So real magic, I think, and again, we haven't, we haven't, this is the first time we've trained this model, so let's yeah, see yeah, if real yeah, magic yeah. happens. We're now inside an if statement, right? So your okay. context has changed, and in fact, you'll notice our top suggestion within this if statement is now show alert, show alert async, not set title async. Okay. Now, yeah. so so maybe there's a little more training we need to do there because when you are in an if, um, right? I would show alert might not be the thing all the time. I could see when it, if we add some more code that says if there's an exception, show an alert. Yeah. Would it be able to pick up that context? I think it can pick up that context. And okay. if it doesn't, then that's something we should work on. And okay. send us feedback so, if you're getting suggestions that you don't think quite make sense. Yeah. So so maybe there's code that I that that we need to write, some of our, our contributors that are out there, the pair programmers watching in the chat room, to help it show those other scenarios that we want to encourage mm -hmm. for good behavior. Show alert when there is an exception and if we have more of that code in there. When we retrain, it would favor that? It should. Oh, cool. Yeah. So actually, cool. one thing that I think is pretty cool is you'll notice with this sequence, yeah. it uh, because this is the only code that it can analyze, yeah. you'll notice it actually gives you this recommendation, and then it gives you open URL, <laughs> and then it gives you show OK async, because that's all it knows. <laughs> wow. But okay. it, so it picks up on this if, else, if, else, if, uh, pattern and, and changes it for you. Okay, that's pretty neat that it's it that it changed syntax on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and so like down here, outside of all of this, again, it it's it's not choosing the exact right thing. Um, set setting async is down one, but it still has it as, hey, these these are the most likely things you might want. Sure. So now it's one keystroke away versus. Many, many, many. Versus several. But the, b this goes towards it didn't have a lot of code to analyze. Mm -hmm. and, and just with a little bit, it's already pretty close to what we'd want to suggest, right? The, right. the on will disappear event is what fires when, when you navigate away from that button and it disappears off of the current displayed buttons on the device. So that is when I'd want to save my settings. So we're already pretty close. If we had more sample code for it to analyze, it would get better at recognizing that? It would. <gasps> OK. Yeah. We need so to write like, more sample code. Here you have your Stream Deck event payload. And so again, it's not totally right, but it says within an if statement, um, you're actually more likely to favor dot event 
Let's see how it does down here. So this one is actually mm. right. It actually wants context because you're using it as a parameter, it looks like here. Yep, yep. Um, and up here, it says, oh, well, context, maybe not. But here, right, args.payload, you use it with settings a ton. Yep. And so the only thing it feels comfortable recommending is actually settings. Okay. So, and thinking about how this fits together. And here's where I was thinking we would need to do a Roslyn analyzer. The, the code on line 51, mm -hmm. when, it, when it does say set title async, mm -hmm. that we need to give it the context that was passed in. That's, that's actually some information about which, which device is connected mm -hmm. and the screen and the button location to interact with. So, so an analyzer might be that hammer to bring down, but we've already got it where it's saying this is the one you should be using. Yeah, so the way we're thinking about IntelliCode versus Roslyn, and really the way a lot of the customers I've talked to think about it, is IntelliCode is meant to be more of that like fuzzy suggestion. Okay. Like, I don't expect it to be right all the time, right? It's like, mm -hmm. hey, you might want this, but you're the developer, you know best. You know, we're here to help you, but maybe you're doing something real crazy. Okay. Analyzers to me are much more black and white, right? It's you have a style rule. Uh, you should 100% use your explicit type. And that is something that is very black and white, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or it's something that will not compile. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and so the way I think about it is IntelliCode is meant to be more of that suggestion. It's maybe a little fuzzy. Um, I want it to be right most of the time, but maybe sometimes I'm going to go off the beaten path. Right. Whereas analyzers, I think, are very black and white. Like there's a right way and a wrong way. Mm -hmm. But you can do the right. You can do the warnings in there. With the, you can do with warnings. Them. There's. Okay. I think there's levels of like you have to pay attention to me or not. Um, but it's just like. If I'm going to address an analyzer warning, there's a very distinct way to address oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Whereas writing code and choosing a method, <laughs> um, I think has a little bit more more wiggle room. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Carrie, thanks so much for that kind cheer. <laughs> and um, I don't know if you know this, Allison, but all the cheers, the subscriptions that, that I get here on the channel, we make uh, we make donations to Black Girls Code. Oh, that's awesome. All through the first quarter of 2019. Uh. Thank you so much, Carrie. We'll make a donation to Black Girls Code. Thanks so much. Awesome. Um, Thanks. And I, I love the emotes. There's some C Sharp <laughs> bot and the .NET bot emotes. Thank you, Maz, for stopping in. Hello, hello. Love the beard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened my, about, I see some people saying about drop frames. Everything that we're seeing status-wise on my side looks clear. If there's anything you want me to redo, I am great at this demo. Yeah, as but, we've seen. Okay, but but <laughs> so I, and I saw our friend Mark Wilson Thomas, our colleague, oh, is there in the chat hi, helping out. Hey, Mark. Um, Mark's got to deal with me every day. It's it's a hard life. It's a hard life yeah. because it's illegal in nine countries. It is. Um, no, no. Um, so. There were questions now about the sharing. So yeah. if we build this, and we're going to be deploying the Stream Deck lib as a as a NuGet package, and we have we went through showing Azure DevOps deploying and, and putting that package out there. Mm -hmm. How do I share that now with folks who use the package? Yeah. So right now it is a little bit of a manual process, but okay. again, but you can. You can. Okay. You can. Let's start there. Yes, you can. Uh, Oh, off zero, Bobby. More thank cheers. you for that cheer. <laughs> I'm not going to do. I'm. I'm not going to do any. Um, any. Any cheer graffiti today. But thank you for that. Yes, Black Girls Code does rock. Thank you so much for that support. Yeah. So what you can do here is we have this nice big share model button. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And you'll see it. You know, grayed out while it was thinking. And then we get this great little. You know notification bar up here. And for those of you who maybe are listening in on the phone and aren't looking at the screen, it says IntelliCode sharing link copied to the clipboard. So this is a link you can share out. Okay. Treat the link as you would your source code. Share it with people you trust. Okay? People so, you trust. People you trust. Again, let's remember. I trust my chat room. Exactly. We we don't, um, what's the word? We don't upload your source code, right? Okay. Um, but as you've seen, the custom model does contain things like class name types mm. or methods. Okay. And so if you have, you know, some super secret method name, be sure you're aware of that when you go to share your model. Okay. 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 
Um, and again, if any of you are really excited about this, but you're like, hey, my company really needs these set of security rules, uh, I know we've got our bot dropping in a Calendly link. You can set up time to talk one-on-one -on -one with me yes. in half hour slots. I have uh, availability all throughout February. You so can do it! Click through and schedule some time. Yeah, Send come an email. chat with me. That's easy. Yeah, yeah. Email or chat one-on-one, -on -one, whatever your poison is. I'm here to listen to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So you can learn more about this security uh, uh, info, or you can copy again. So it's already copied to the clipboard. Let's see. Oh man, that's right. I can't can't do anything. But you know what? I will just open up a new text file uh, since my Windows Start key won't let me open any new programs right now. But we are resourceful. Yes. So we're gonna <laughs> open a new text file. I will give this a little bit more. I think. Um, Janescu, that's an interesting idea. And I'm not, uh, so uh, Janesco in the chat room is suggesting, mm -hmm. there's a project we've been working on called Code Suggestions, where folks in the chat room are able to send code directly into my Visual Studio as I'm broadcasting. Oh. What, and what he's suggesting is it'd be neat to be able to do those code suggestions and get IntelliCode. I'm not sure where oh. we would show. I don't know about putting IntelliCode into the chat room <laughs> or into an editor embedded somewhere around Twitch, but I, there's something there that I think we should noodle around in the future. Uh, Drega asks, on a recent stream, weren't we parsing command line arguments? Yes, we were. We used Nate McMaster's library. You can see that in this project, Stream Deck Toolkit out there. It's in the Fritz and Friends organization on GitHub. Cool. Okay. So, um, so now we have this link here. Okay. Um, so I can. And it's got a big old hash it's on it. Got the a end big of it. old hash on it. Nothing that says my project name or my name. Nope. Okay. Yeah. So when you uh, you grab this link, and then when we go over to IntelliCode, uh, you need to make sure whoever you're sharing it with also has the extension. Okay. So you'll sure. go to that this page sense. again. Yeah. Um, and you'll go ahead and hit Add Model. So now that we're and then here, you paste, it in. paste it in, okay. and you can add it. Um, and now you, this model will work anywhere inside uh, any Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code instance that you have IntelliCode installed. Okay. You have to sign in. I know sure. some people hate that, but mm -hmm. it's the only way we have of associating your models with you. But. You can log in with your Microsoft account or yes. your GitHub account. Yep, you so can do if you all do want to be a little pseudo anonymous, create a GitHub account with your pseudonym. Mm -hmm. You don't have to give it any more information than that, and you can log into Visual Studio with that. Yeah. yeah. So we love GitHub. <laughs> we do. It's great. Um, Lennon asks a good question here: Is mm -hmm. the model link consistent across trainings, or does it change? You know, that's a good question. And I'm not totally sure the answer, but I think we can find out right okay. now. So we've got our text Let's file. Let's give it a try. We've got our hash. Let's go ahead and retrain. Okay. I believe it's consistent, but I do want to double check before I give false information. Uh, boredom, thank you for that <laughs> subscription using your Twitch Prime. I appreciate that. Yes, love the dancing Bill and Steve. Oh, so good. Yeah. Although, if Mark Wilson Thomas is online, maybe he can ask our engineering <gasps> right beside him and see if he can get an answer before I can. There's literally people right there from the team watching. Uh, so, good question. How is a model useful to a different project? So, mm, okay. Let's say you have a project or solution that uh, leverages a bunch of custom classes or types. I think it's fair to say that those classes and types might be used in another solution. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. So in that case, you don't have to have a separate solution to train on. You can just leverage that, you know, maybe it's that golden child project or solution. That's how we want people to use it. And then those suggestions are fed into any other solution that might leverage those same types and classes. Okay. Yeah. So would I, can I, can I give it multiple models then to parse and work with? So it's Visual, it's, it's, the scope is Visual Studio. Okay. So as you build more models, we actually use all of them to give you the best suggestions. Okay, so, so thinking out loud, somebody mm -hmm. who's building a new plugin and brings in the model we just created, yep. 
as they're going along and they say, you know what, I've built something unique and different, they'll want to retrain the model for themselves. Does right. it take, will it take into account the one that we published and shared? Yes, it does. So there's some okay. magic merging sort aggregation. of aggregation okay. of models. Okay. Um, and we are still working on that, how to make that as best as it can be. Um, but there is some magic merging that happens okay. um, to, to figure out how to do that. I think Stelzi has a great suggestion here in the chat room. <laughs> Model Link would be a great addition to new spec. You know, you are not the first person to suggest that. So it's right up here. Trust me, I'm thinking on that. Yeah. So uh, we're ready now. We can share our model. Okay. And let's go ahead and let me paste go to on the a end. different line. Yes. Paste. So it is consistent. Okay. So uh, for this model, you will get a consistent link. And what is exciting about that is once you share a model, mm -hmm. so say Allison shares it with Jeff, Jeff adds it to his Visual Studio and Telecode uh, model list. If I retrain that model as the owner, you automatically get the updates. Ah. Yeah. So okay. you don't have to add the model every time and, I update it. And I don't have to somehow refresh the model from nope. out there. It'll we just automatically pick it up. do it. Nice. Yeah. So we have basically a service, and whenever IntelliCode starts, we ping our service and we say, "Hey, give me all the updated models for Jeff." And okay. if I have updated that model, you get the updated model. Okay. No okay. So add um, it once. Set it and forget it. I'm on board with that. Okay. Magic yeah. model mixing <laughs> with mathsy stuff, yes. That's a little that bit. That is the technical term. Okay. Math so stuff. so we could take this this URL and mm -hmm. put it on our repository so folks who are using IntelliCode could bring that down and start using it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I think that's actually something that'd be pretty awesome yeah. for y'all to try out. And if you run into problems, like I said, come talk yeah. with me so I can make it better. So, what happens if I actually navigate to that link, right? If we put that link on our README <laughs> on the front, right? If somebody just clicks it because they're navigating around GitHub, mm -hmm. right? And even if we do put a thing there that says "Train your IntelliCode with our model for the Stream Deck Lib." Does that go somewhere that has information? Uh, I believe it should point to information. Um, it might also, I, I believe it should point to, I think our end goal is to have it point to some information. Right now, you might just get a 404 not okay. found. Um, I think that might have been one of the things that we had to, to cut back mm. um, on. But. So thinking out loud, if making a feature request on the fly here live mm -hmm. where nobody can hear us. Um, I'm thinking how how live share right. You have the link that yep. it'd be neat to when you click that, give you that option. Do you want to add this to your Visual yes. Studio? Yes, and that is ideally part of the process that okay. we'd like to. Oh um, my gosh! But as yes. you know, small teams, small experimental. Small steps. Small steps. Absolutely. Trying to just figure out if people like this or not. And At now we're working on smoothing. It, actually, XPaw is making a, a good a point here. I saw. Yeah, if we share models and the hashes are the same. Do they get versioned? So you only have the most updated model. Mm. If versioning is something that you are passionate about mm. and you have scenarios that you'd really like that, um, again, submit feedback, file it on the GitHub, schedule time with me, send me an email, tweet at me. Yeah, at right. Allison underscore AU. I am on that all the time. Uh, there's lots of ways to get in contact with me. So let me know, and that way we can figure out what the right experience is. Absolutely. Um, let me, Allison is on Twitter at, and you are? At Allison, A L L I S O N underscore A U. Much easier than spelling out my full name. <laughs> there we go. Fun fact, yeah. every airline system has a different way of dealing with hyphens in last names. Are you kidding? So my name is different depending on which airline I fly. Sometimes oh it's gosh. Buchholz Au smushed together. Yeah. Sometimes there's a space. Sometimes there's a hyphen. Sometimes they cut off the Au part. It's, it's a mystery. You never know what's going to happen. Mm. So okay. for those of you who are considering giving your children a hyphenated last name. This is my plea to you to really consider that or <laughs> reconsider it. Think about that. Think about it. Okay. A space is generally much easier to deal with than a hyphen. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Just my PSA. But I, I do think, Paul, you, you do make you a make very a good point. point. 
about about versioning that could could create I can see how that might be uh, very useful but I am not the expert in that so please uh, come chat with me so I can have a better understanding of those scenarios and what we might need to support. Yeah. Okay, so so we have this URL. We can we can paste that out to our GitHub later. Mm -hmm. But there's some other things that, that we can do in here. There's some new features that you've updated. We added an editor config to our project. Oh, yes. Yes, I see that you have right here, right? Cool. Yeah, and we, we just got started. Only a couple of recommendations because I'm not... I'm not militant about some of these things, but of course, everybody wants to use tabs, right? Everybody they uses do. tabs. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, and I like to keep mine two spaces so that we can fit all the code on the screen here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's just me, and I, I'm enforcing my will on everybody. But <laughs> I do love all of these comments about uh, Germany and Austria, and part of me is just like, maybe I should move over there. They <laughs> they know how to deal with these names. Yeah, that, right. <laughs> We've got some European friends yeah. in the chat room, so um, cool. So I do see you have a solution level editor config. Yep. I don't want to mess up your editor config, but okay. I do want to show you uh, one of the other cool things IntelliCode does. So. Okay. I'm sure you know that editor config works in what I like to call cones of influence. Explain that. <laughs> yeah. So cones of influence is my the way I think about how we apply an editor config. So at the very okay. top level, it applies to everything, right? Okay. Okay. Within this uh, project, if I were to add an editor config, it would just apply to that project. So it's a ah. smaller cone. It's it, they're hierarchical. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I don't the know top where. covers everything. Exactly. All right. I get it. And I get it. And the project is just that little slice. Okay. So could I put one? Could I put one in just a folder inside my project? Yeah. So it actually ends up being at the the folder level. Basically. Okay. Okay. Yep. So we have our project here, and if we right click and we do add, mm -hmm. you'll notice we've got this handy dandy new editor config. IntelliCode option. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, are you telling me you're going to spin up artificial intelligence and look at my code? <laughs> so, artificial intelligence might be pushing it. I don't like to to, okay. to make this bigger than it is. This is really inference. So, so you're, so you're spinning up developer intelligence and looking at my code? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> what's going to happen here is we're going to look through your code base. And okay. this is really more of that, uh, this is more on that like static analysis side. Okay. So, what we're going to do is look through it and we're going to say, hey, what are the most popular practices in okay. this project, right? Sure. If you have a mix of, I love the quintessential example of vars versus types, Everybody right? Everybody should use Every var. <laughs> um, so if you have a mix of those, it's just going to choose whichever one has the least uh, like warnings about it. Okay. Right? So if you have 10 types and two vars, we're going to say, hey, you probably want to use types. Specify the types. Okay. Exactly. So right. I'm going to go ahead and click this. You see our great progress bar. It analyzed it and it generated this whole file for you. Okay, so there's a lot more recommendations in there than what I. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool. Put in there. Okay. Um, let, me, let me make this a little bigger there. So yeah. it tells you here, just so you have it in your mind, that rules in this file were inferred by IntelliCode for you. Okay. You can always modify these to suit your own policies and you can learn more in case editor config is new for you. But this is our way of trying to sort of get you halfway up the mountain to getting consistent code style. Mm. Like I'm sure for everyone in the chat, how many people like have argued about the code rules they want to use. Absolutely, I'm, right? I'm Tabs sure versus spaces. That's the, the classic one. And like you spend what hours arguing about this with your team? Maybe not arguing, maybe like light banter. Maybe it's a screaming match. I don't know. Um, and then you settle on a set Sabres of rules. Sabres at dawn is what they do. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. So and, and uh, there's already um, syntax highlighting for this file format, right? The the hashes indicate comments, mm -hmm. and then we've got the blue indicating the different commands. So already we're in phenomenal shape there, being yep. able to work with this. D don't tell me we've got IntelliSense on the, so, the arguments and things <laughs> in here, don't we? So right now we we I think I do believe if we let's see, I might 
I don't. So we don't have a built-in uh, language service for this okay. yet. But I do know Mads Christensen, the wonderful PM he is, does have an extension. Uh, so if you download his extension, then you get like the, the little bit of IntelliSense for it. Um, there is no IntelliCode for the editor config, but okay. maybe we will. But it's easy day. to add on. It There's is. an extension to download and add, and extensions like that are free. Walsh Renato asks about regions. Regions. So I unfortunately mm. am not an expert on all these rules. Okay. I am an expert in how we apply editor config and how we do all of these issues and things. Um, but that is actually something for our good friend Kendra or Scott Hunter, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Remove region support from Visual Studio. I don't, Joe, that's, <laughs> that's a little much. Yeah. Come on now. Um, <laughs> I want to sit in a tabs versus spaces conference panel. That, that sounds like it's going to be LARPing, right? Live action <laughs> role playing? I don't know. Yeah, so you can see here, we, we've inferred this. Uh, one cool new thing in Visual Studio, just while we're talking about editor config, is this little health indicator here. Oh. So this says, hey, you've got a green check mark. At least in here, no issues are found. You're okay. in good shape. But let me close some of these. If we go back over to one of our files, let's see if you're in as good of shape. So. Cool. No issues found. Okay, so it, it's doing the editor config analysis on yes, that file. It is. Okay. It is. <clears throat> so let's do something cool. Maybe let's change these sure. and make them a Create little Create a violator? Different. Yeah. We okay. Could totally All do right. that. So instead of true, why don't we change these, you know, this option and this option to false? So I'm going to select this word. One cool thing that is I worked on this, so that's why I'm talking about it, is we now have multi-cursor support in Visual Studio, which okay. I find really cool. So um, what is multi-cursor? I've heard so, people talk about this, but I, I haven't seen it. What is this? Yeah, so multi-cursor is just the ability to add multiple edit points at the same time in your file. Okay. So a really cool thing is if I go here and I do Shift-Alt, and, oh, no, it's not Shift-Alt. I think it's Control-Alt. I always forget the key mappings. But you see we have another cursor here. Oh, I can wow. add another one here, and then I can write, like, Allison is the best. Although, if my editor catches up to me, ooh, an exception. Sometimes that happens. Preview code. But now we have Allison is the best in three In places. all three places. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and hmm. they're all single transactions, so if I do Control Z. It does it all at once. It does it all at once. Nice. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, again, you can do that with Control Alt Click. Mm. You can add as many curses as you'd like. Um, another cool thing I like to do is I just like Control Alt Click like wherever, and then I can do End, and it does it toward the end of the line. So now I can say Allison is the best here if I wanted, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Oh my gosh! Yes. Yeah. But uh, actually, I think one of my favorite things is multi caret selection, and that's what I'm going to show you here. Okay. So I have selected True. Yeah. 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 If you ever forget the uh, shortcuts, which I always do when I've been away from coding for a little while, I do edit, and then there's this multi caret thing here. Okay. And you have three actions. You can insert, matching caret, you can, and so that's the next one. You can insert at all matching, or you can remove your last caret. And there's actually uh -huh. one more that shows up when I add one. So if I do uh, shift alt period, let's try that. Oh, shift alt period. It selected the next true. Okay. Right? That's okay. cool. Now, let's see if I remember this correctly. I believe control shift alt period. Nope, it doesn't. Okay. I I forgot. So oh my gosh, now that we have two one. carrots, you can move the last carrot down, which is effectively a skip. So shift uh. alt slash. That's what it is. So we've got this one. So we've got shift alt period. So now we have two selections. Right. Both now trues. if I do Shift Alt Slash, it just selected that last one. Okay. So now, so you're you're selecting and and rolling back. Exactly. Okay. So now I can change both of those to false. Nice. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to replace every single true like find and replace all might do. No. I wanted to see which ones would be replaced. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, uh, Board M asks, hate to be off topic, but is there a VB Fritz? There's actually somebody else has the VB Fritz <laughs> name. Um, but you might know my more functional cousin, F-sharp Fritz. We haven't seen him for a while. He might be coming back in the next month or two. 
after I spend some time talking to Philip Carter. Ooh, oh, not me, my 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 more functional cousin F sharp Fritz. But <laughs> VB Fritz, we might be able to do something with that. But like I said, somebody on Twitter already has that account name. That's um, like the worst. I feel like I yeah. need to buy any domain name that I'm thinking about for like a kid in ten years now. Oh, I've been I've gone. been staking claims to Twitch accounts. Really? Oh my gosh, I've, I've I must have about ten of them now. I guess I need to figure out like the next up and coming thing and buy those names. Buy them now. all. Instagram? Nope, too late. Too late. Yeah, mm. all the first names are gone. Uh, sadly, Fortran Fritz retired. He did off zero, <laughs> Bobby. I'm sorry. Um, he, he was in AARP, the American Association of Retired People, and yeah, we shipped him <laughs> off to the old folks' home. Um, cool. So let's okay. go back. So now, so we've updated. We've marked these things as. Ah, you've got no errors here. You know what? I'm let's see. Good. Let's see. What if we do? You know what? Let's just change one of these. We're gonna just go crazy in some places and see what happens. Because okay. I want to find errors. Oh, we've got a message. Okay. That says to use framework type. I don't think that's mm, one of our no. our things. All right. There could be a Q sharp Fritz. It, that's, it, he's just a young fellow. He's not mature enough to appear on Twitch yet. Stay tuned. We might we might be talking to Q sharp Fritz at some point. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Maybe if we open another file, things will. Okay. So we've got Hang our on, it's, quintessential. It's right here between us. Yeah. There, there you can see it right there. Just lean over this way. <laughs> uh, for those of you, I mean, I am covering this. It says use explicit type instead of var. The quintessential example that starts way too many arguments. So if we click on it, it'll show us there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so our health indicator still says no issues found. And that's because this is just a suggestion, yeah. right? It's just a nice little thing that maybe you should consider. But what if we changed both of these to warnings? OK. Right? And now we go back. Cobol Fritz is no, th there is no Cobol Fritz. He got stuck in a mainframe and never made it out. <laughs> so now we have a warning, right? So our file health indicator oh, changed. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right, so it no longer, yeah, it, it did say no errors, and now mm -hmm. we've got. Now we've got a warning. We're used to seeing those indicators in Visual Studio. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, if you're like me and you don't have your error list open all the time, now I can quickly see, hey, I have something that maybe I should check out. Mm. Um, so if I click on it, it opens the error list for me, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will go ahead and close that again. Now it, it gave you the light the the light bulb indicator there. Can you still can you control period and and write it'll fix it yeah, for you, right? Yeah, I can totally do that. But what if you have a bunch of these? What if these are like what if you had like ninety nine star warnings here? Not in my code. My okay. code is. That's what they all say. <laughs> okay. So, all right, in, in this case, we've, we've changed our policy. We went from preferring var to preferring the, the explicit type. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to I change everywhere that I was writing var to explicit type. What do I do? Well, now you can do code cleanup. So, okay. for those of you who've used Visual Studio in the past, code, yeah. you know, format document is mm -hmm. what, what that's called. And generally, that's just like, fix up tabs versus spaces or trailing white space. And it's a nice formatting things, but it wasn't leveraging any of these awesome analyzers okay. uh, for like our so, actual code. So it'll take advantage of Rosalyn now to go after and do that instead of just a text find exactly, and replace. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So there's this little icon down here. It looks like a little broom because we're cleaning up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we click on that, it should get started in one second. Control K E. All right, I might need my options. Oh, okay. So, for this should just work when I click it. But again, hot bits. So hot bits. Yeah. Just the way Grandma used to make them. <laughs> exactly. So now we've got two profiles. We've got profile one and profile two. If I go ahead and click configure code cleanup, you'll see that I have these two different profiles. So this mm. really allows me to figure out, hey, these are all the fixers that are available. Okay. And this is, you know, V1 of this. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, what we actually need to do is right now we're only fixing removing unnecessary usings and sort usings. Okay. But we want to fix that var issue, right? Sure. So what we're going to do is we are going to look for, I feel like my, 
my eyes are, okay, yeah, apply implicit explicit type preferences. I always forget it's called that. So we're gonna add that up. So now it's in our profile one. I'm gonna click OK. And when I hit this little broom icon, yep. ideally this var should turn into a type. And in three, two, one, <gasps> magic. Right, just what, I mean, easy, right? When you change policy, the code still works. It still compiles, right? We get the, the no errors found error right indicator right here. That makes sense, right? This is right. This is the kind of uh, productivity enhancement that I want. I don't <laughs> have to think about this and go refine things. It's just taking care of it and made my life easier as a developer. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think one of the great things that I always like to talk about with code cleanup. Um, we introduced some version of this last build, and we've been iterating on it. And the thing I love talking about with people at conferences is. Code cleanup allows you to code in the way you like and then run everything to be conformant with mm. your team with at the policy. end. So okay. if you really like VARs, use Go VARs, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't need to remember to change all of this. Just before you check it in, mm. do your little code cleanup. Okay. And then you're done. All right. Right? Pretty now, cool. Um, there's a, um, I, I'm looking at the code there. Mm -hmm. Now, on um, line 54, it reset the var for the cancellation token source. Yep. But it didn't set the var for the next line there on 56 for the logger factory. Right. Now, is that because it wasn't clear? We weren't saying new logger factory, but instead we were calling a method. Yeah, I do believe this is because it's a slightly different, uh, we're calling that like method. Okay. Yeah. Instead of newing up a, a yep, logger factory. it's a new one. Okay. Yeah. Because you might be doing some crazy things, right? The analyzer mm. only works in cases where it can be 100% sure this is mm. what you want. Uh, Perry asks a good question. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to force code cleanup on all files before pushing your code to GitHub? I think that is currently a suggestion on GitHub. You should uh, find it, and if not, file another one so that the Rosalind team can make some changes for you. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That line's not indented either. Shouldn't that have happened? I don't think this isn't doing the indentation. It's not doing indentation. So okay. I believe if we run Control K D, it should do the indentation, but. To be fair, this is my uh, demo machine, so settings are all over the place. <laughs> Just they as might an not FYI. be the same. They might as not ours. be the same. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so that is code cleanup on editor config. Uh, it's there's also one other cool new thing that we've done. So let me go to code style. So those of you might know uh, code style, this page here. Mm -hmm. So these are all your local code settings, right? The great sure. thing about editor config is it can be checked in. It goes with your yeah. solution, with your repo. Visual Studio Code has a has an enforcer. Exactly. An enforcement you can extension. download an extension yeah. and let editor config work there too. Okay. Um, so one cool thing here is if you have these local settings, like maybe you weren't using an editor config, you just set these local settings and you now want to you know, send this project out into the world and you want other people to follow your styles, yeah. this yeah, yeah. button here is brand new. So you can generator, generate editor config files from your local settings. Okay. Yeah. So, so no need to generate it from code. These are my preferences. Yep. Let's, let's start enforcing that. Mm -hmm. um, VS Mac, I don't actually know the answer to that question. Uh, we can look at, I don't know if Jeff can look that up, or you can ask Uni, he's a good person to ask. Yeah, let me, let me get back to you on that one, Draga. Yeah. Um, I'm not totally sure, because I think the editors uh, and the systems are slightly different. Um, so They may, are slightly yeah. different, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to check back on that. But I hope it works so that. Uh, yeah, I do too. <laughs> My plug came unplugged down here. Oh, no. Mm. But yeah, so if you have, if you're just taking your first foray into editor config, I highly recommend either generating it from your local settings, give it a shot there, um, or you can use IntelliCode and have us just intelligently do it for your solution or project. So, what if somebody has an editor config for me? Is there a way that I can import it onto my settings there? Not yet. Okay. 
Yeah. I but think just having it in my solution file enforces it on the whole Exactly, okay. exactly. Another cool thing is, say for example, this is like a test project and mm -hmm. You know, it's not. But if it were a test project and, and you as a manager are just really excited your developers are writing tests and you're like, use whatever style you want. I don't care. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You can just put a blank editor config in there or maybe just one with tabs versus spaces. Okay. And that will override the solution level ones uh, that maybe are a little bit stricter. Okay. That, yeah. that makes it easier. Yeah. Um, off the zero, Bobby asks, is this CLI runnable to, do, to enforce the editor config stuff? I do not know. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But it, I mean, it's an editor config thing, so having it run in the editor feels like the right place for it. Mm -hmm. But doing that kind of syntax checking and code cleanup as part of your build process? Yeah, I, it's, it's not integrated in the build process yet, so thinking on it, I don't think it's CLI runnable. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. If you had DevOps clean up your code as it's building it, mm -hmm. nobody's going to see that cleaned up code. I could see running it maybe in a GitHub action. That yeah, might be Yeah, that might be cool. Um, I mean, that would be cool. I don't know if it's possible right now. Right, but I like I like the way you're thinking. Mm-hmm. So it could be interesting. I wonder if there's an extension, uh, or if someone could build an extension for Visual Studio where, when it sees that you've committed something, does it run? Code cleanup, because code cleanup is a command. It's control oh, K, go. control E. Oh. So could you couple your commit action with the code cleanup action and do a second commit? I feel like that's a potential extension. It is. As long as you have commands. Um, check in policy, has it been run? That's an interesting that's idea. That's an interesting idea. So one of the things actually that our friend uh, Carrie Payette uh, mm -hmm. was talking to me about is she uses the Stream Deck to automate some of her Visual Studio things. What? Because, yeah, I know. Not That's only, really cool. Not only can you have it play sound effects and, and change things on the stream, but you can have it fire uh, hotkeys. So That's she cool. has buttons set up to do build my project and some of these other things. So for the hotkeys to could run, have a, she could have a clean, clean my code. Clean my Clean my document. Very cool. Anybody with a Stream Deck has it, including uh, Draga says two of them were delivered today. Congratulations, Draga. Enjoy mm -hmm. those. Um, let's see. Pre-receive hook to enforce style in the repository. Can do that with Clang format at the moment. Cool. Okay. Cool. It, from our, our chat here, it seems like people have explored how you might do this. So yeah. I think yeah. there's a lot of fun things. A lot you of can interest. Do. Very yeah. cool. And just one last note, uh, the, the code cleanup is per document. So uh, that just means that, you know, as you're changing files, it'll, it'll work on that file. Okay. Um, it does not work across the solution yet. But if that's something you want, let us know. Yeah, yeah. Always open to take feedback like mm -hmm. that. And you've seen, you've seen the, the stream elements, elements bot is in the chat and dropping some of those links, some information about how to get in touch, provide feedback. If there's stuff that we've shown here today um, that you're interested in learning more about or, or you want to send us feedback or you want to sign up to be an insider like that last message that just popped up there, check that out. There's links to those below here on the channel. If you're over there watching on YouTube, um, we'll attach the links to the description so that you can see some of that information. Uh, if you're watching this video a little bit later and you're not watching it live, and why aren't you watching it live? Um, but we want to make sure that you can get involved. We want to hear your feedback. Folks like Allison are friendly and out there and want to help you be a more productive developer. Yes. I learn so much from our customers. Like, there are some times where you think you've got a great idea and sometimes it's, it's a really stupid idea. And I don't want to spend a bunch of time working on an idea that no one cares about. You don't want to get into a discussion with somebody and get into an argument with who's going to absolutely say, you're not building that thing. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Have to run. All right, thanks for joining us, Mordecai. Thanks for joining. Um, <clears throat> the Observer. I do not have my own stream channel, but maybe. But we do have the Visual Studio channel. So you can, you, we're, we're putting more and more content over there. You're going to see more from the .NET teams talking about all the various .NET framework features over there on the Visual Studio channel. We're, we're going to be bringing some more folks on that can uh, show Which and talk Scott? about new features <laughs> over there. Which Scott? There's plenty of them. Yeah. One of them wears a red shirt. Um, another one has a goatee like me. Um, and, the other, and, and the third one might be here with us tomorrow. 
<laughs> Gary says, thank you so much, Allison. Yeah, this was great. We, I think we learned a lot here. I want to get Visual Studio 2019 installed on my streaming machine at home so we can start really working with here. Scott H. He's hard. To, there's two folks named Scott H. Actually, there are there are way too many Scotts. I think yes. I know five personally. Yeah. Um, and Silicon Orchid is talking about yep NDC London. Some mm -hmm. of the Scots, Scott and Damien, will be in the UK this week. I thank you for sharing that information. Um, well, actually, the Scott with the red shirt joint did join us on Twitch for Connect, ah. and you can see that on the Visual Studio channel. I we. That's archived now over on YouTube as well. Um, <laughs> could have smiled the full stream. I, we had fun. Yeah. This was a lot of fun. I uh, love talking. If any of you have seen any of my other videos, you know, someone told me I laugh too much so they can't take me seriously. But I feel like people enjoy it more. So That's right. We're going to drop. We're going to just get upset <laughs> at some point Boom. randomly in, in our code. <laughs> my gosh. Um, ancient Coder, cheers with a couple of .NET bots. Thanks. Thank you. This was uh, so much fun. Oh my gosh, It was yes. definitely worth waking up at 6 a.m. for. Would do it again. There you go. Anyone named Scott is a great person. I'm not biased in any way. I'm, I have a feeling the Naked Flame is named Scott. <laughs> Don't change, says Frank. Frank. Frank is one of our colleagues now. Awesome. On the uh, Azure Developer Relations team. Uh, we need more Allison. Uh, maybe, you know what? We're going to, the Visual Studio 2019 is going to be released, I'm just taking a guess, in 2019. Yeah. So there might be an opportunity as this gets released, maybe a little bit later in the year, we, we come back and revisit and see how features have grown. Yeah. Get some more feedback and, and talking to some folks. Uh, Allison and <laughs> friends. <laughs> hey, you know what? There's, we're, we're building out content on that we Visual are? Studio channel. We might, we, there's opportunities for things. Oh yeah, I do love to talk. I, I think a lot of us on the program manager teams do. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Johan, we need more Allison indeed. Thank well, you so thank much you. for that cheer. That is, <laughs> that is very kind of you. Um, don't bet on the year. It doesn't ha always work <laughs> out that way. It doesn't always, but um, some, f some folks have, uh, I mean, the preview's out, so we've, we've met that yeah, goal. Yeah, we've met that goal, <laughs> right? Quality bar, we'll, we'll make sure that's nailed down and we'll, we'll ship things out. I love the dog emote there, Nightmare. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, we, cool. we covered a lot here. We did. Um, so why don't we grab, we'll, we'll do this offline, but we can grab that, uh, that URL for our trained model. We can attach mm -hmm. it to our GitHub project so other folks can start participating and working with the model for our Stream Deck toolkit. Yeah. Um, As I said, I am here yes. all, all of February. I mean, I'm here all the time. I have zero plans to leave anytime soon. So you can always contact me. But especially for the month or, or through the month of February, it is one of my main goals to talk to as many people as possible about IntelliCode. So if you want help setting it up, if you're running into errors, if you just want to ping me whenever you see something really cool or really terrible, by all means, I emphatically encourage you to do that uh, yeah, because absolutely. I want to hear from you. And I'm here to help you in whatever ways you can. And Mike, that's not helping. If you submit 5,000 reports on Visual Studio <laughs> 2019, I don't think Allison's going to dye her hair. I will not. No, that's not going to happen. But maybe, you know, depending on when build is or whatever, maybe maybe I'll do some like temporary purple. Uh, My we hair might be is streaming. red purple right now, so okay. it wouldn't be too far off. Okay, we might be streaming, doing some streaming from Build. Yeah. Whenever Build might be. Mm, come on, marketing. Let's let's announce these things. Yeah. I need to show the dog emojis to Ned Pyle. Says Nightmare. There's somebody between Ned and and our friend, our our favorite .NET security uh, officer, Barry Dorns. I want to get somebody talking security with us on stream. Oh, yeah. Security. That's important. It's, I mean, like I said, people have, I've heard a lot of concerns about security, so I've been talking with a lot of people and Sela about how we do that with IntelliCode, and it's it's really interesting stuff. So, Sela, that's that's Microsoft, that's... Microsoft that's, Legal. Yeah, Microsoft Legal. Yeah. So, we got to make sure that they're they're signing off and approving on some of the things we do so that folks are behaving yeah. properly with our code. And I mean, we want to make sure all of our users are protected. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't want anyone coming to me being like, my code got out. 
that's not what I want. Yeah, no, no, we don't want that at all. Um, what are we, is it rainbow beard time yet? Yes, we did. I'll, let me hear, I'll zoom in just zoom. briefly. We're going to go back outside to the treehouse, right? Ah, oh, it's so nice outside. It is. They set us up is. out here and yeah, you can see a little bit there. It, it's hard to tell on our, our screen oh, look, here. there's a bird. Oh, <laughs> that, that, that was that sound. Well, I think, I think we're just about out of time, and I understand there was going to be something on the Visual Studio channel here afterwards. Um, I don't think they're over there. I know, unfortunately, that .NET community stand-up was canceled. Oh. I know. Kendra, unfortunately, got really sick last night. She came okay. down with a cold. So um, I was going to hop over there right yeah. after this, but uh, I think that has been moved to another time. Which okay. Is sad. So we but will, we're sending our well wishes to Kendra. Yeah, absolutely. Hope you're feeling better, Kendra. I will tweet a photo of the beard. I have a up close picture that we will I will share out there. Um, let's see. Is there somebody out there streaming that we can sh uh, share the love with? Send some folks over to. I am scrolling, mm -hmm. looking to see who's coming up, who's out there. Code Rush. Are you going live today? It's a th Thursday, aren't you on Thursdays? It's Thursday, it's almost nine Pacific. Is, uh, let's see, we are expecting a nice headshot on Twitter. Ah, we might be able to do something about that. I'll make that. sure we get one of those. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I got y'all. <laughs> this is you, you're gonna you're gonna take care of that. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, I'll update it over over on Twitter. And then. Uh, we'll send it over to Facebook. My parents will see it. I'll retweet it. Allison will retweet it. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Is that good? Check out the productivity guide out there. I'm not seeing anybody out here that I mm. want to send folks over to to continue the love today. And well, I will say while you're looking for that, everybody. if anyone has any other last minute questions, my, my next hour freed up, so I am yeah. available to take any visual studio questions or, or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, I'll go take a nap. Take a nap? Are go you see kidding? My puppy. Oh, yeah. it's the middle of the day. Uh, no, I think we're just going to wrap up, it sounds like. Cool. Uh, see you guys next time. Great job. Thank you so much, Thanks, everybody. Guys. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll be still here at Channel 9 Studios. And uh, I think our guest, it sounds like, is going to be the one and only Scott Hunter. I'll confirm that a little bit later today. I do have a backup guest in case. Something comes up, we're not able to do that. Intellicode and Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, File a request and yeah. I'll see what I can do. Yeah. There's Robert Tables. Thanks so much for joining us. D don't key his name into, into anything that you want to test for. Oh. For, yeah. Yes, you did hear Puppy. She is a four month old Pembroke Corgi puppy. I will tweet out a photo of her later for there those you of go. you who want to see her. She right. is adorable. Her name is Olive. <laughs> Olive, and that's I love great. Her. Cool. Olive, my heart is her AKC name, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Right? It's a cute name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, this video will be available later today over on YouTube, and I hope you join me tomorrow. We'll have more code live from Channel 9 right here. Maybe we'll be in the treehouse again tomorrow. Maybe. We'll see. Take care, everybody. We'll see you. Bye.